All right, here's my last topic that I want to record, and we're going to live demo it and see how it comes out. So we're going to basically install everything we need to do push notifications, and I'm going to do it from memory, so hopefully I'll remember all the steps involved here. Okay, so the first thing we ought to do is I'm going to come out to the uh, directory structure I've created. You can see I have this mobile directory where I put everything. There's JBoss Developer Studio, EAP 6.3, a standard 6.3. The only thing I did, I did do the add user, so I can log in as an admin. Um, otherwise, I said unzip and go. You can see there's the zip file itself. And then I have the workspace that I've been working on uh, inside JBoss Developer Studio. But I also have three additional zip files. Uh, the critical one here is the unified push server.zip. I'm going to double click on that guy or unzip it and whatever your operating system requires. And then I'm going to deploy the pieces of it into the ADAP. So I have two war files there, but there is a database that you need. And so we have configurations right now for MySQL and Postgres. I'm going to use the built-in H2 because it makes my life easy. I'm going to copy that guy and I'm going to come over to EAP 6.3 standalone deployments, drop that in and then let that hot deploy right there. So hopefully that worked out nicely. Yep, looks like it hot deployed. I see something happening down there. And then I'm going to come back over here to my unified push server, grab these two guys. The readme, by the way, right there documents these things. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, copy. And then I'm going to come over here to EAP 6.3, standalone deployments, paste these guys in. All right, and so they're going to go through the hot deployment process. We'll see if it works out. Deploying, deploying. All right, is it going to work? All right, deployed. And you can notice my server console over here made an update as well. All right, so we got those two war files deployed. So now, now let's come out here and check it out. So where's our browser at here over here? Here's our browser again. Um, uh, Localhost, and it shows up under ag push. All right, so just remember ag push. And the default user ID and password is admin123. It's in that readme also, but admin123, that's default. When you hit login, it says, wait a second, you need to change your password. So the 123, by the way, for those who are terrified, it's not something sticky. You gotta get rid of it as soon as you get going. So now you gotta give it a real password. And I'm gonna type in my somewhat complicated password there. Hopefully I did it correctly. Okay, fine. Now I have, I now have that admin account set up. Um, and you can kind of see under account management over here. I can give it my email address if I want to, and my name and stuff like that. Save. All right, back to the console. Um, but basically, you see this is our uh, push server uh, screen, right? So this is the console for it, the dashboard, if you will. I can see how many applications and notifications and installations I have. An installation is an actual device, right? So just bear that in mind. We'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but I need to start creating applications. Now, I need to have an actual application that's being deployed to the phone, and I'm not going to bother with creating the application here just yet. So let me go ahead and do the application that's deployed to the phone. I'm going to come back to JBoss Developer Studio now. Uh, and actually, what I need to do first is go back out here. And if you remember, there's these quick starts, right? So the quick starts uh, need to be unzipped. And you can see there's Hello World. That's the one we're going to go get right there. So let's do a... Uh, remember the import we did earlier, import, uh, import Cordova project, next, browse, and um, uh, right here, uh, quick starts, hello world, grab it up, uh, and we want the Cordova version of that, so just keep that in mind, Cordova version, so we'll grab that guy, copy it in, and hit finish, and so, all right, loading up that guy right there. Now one thing you should keep in mind when you're doing push notifications is you can't simulate it with Cordova Sim. Um, so, and actually we have it set up so that if you do attempt to, uh, let me say run as Cordova Sim here. Um, uh, you know, so you notice right here it says registering and it should, it never finishes registering, right? <laughs> so that's one option you gotta be uh, aware of because it doesn't run correctly within the context of Cordova Sim. Push notifications require real hardware to test on. So you got to put it on real hardware. You can't simulate it. Uh, that's just the nature of the beast. Thank you, Apple. Thank you, Google. Um, and the other thing I need help also is I need the plugin. I need to install my plugin here. So I'm going to say install Cordova plugin. Okay. And I'm going to pick it from a directory. So in this case, I want to use the the the, the plugin that shipped. And you can kind of see right here the plugin. And I think I'll pick that one. Um, uh, nope. Let me get that right. I'm going to pick. 
pick the plugin. You can see it's right here in the quick starts section. Hit open. And then um, and then if I did that correctly, I want to make sure I got this listed here correctly, I can hit finish. Okay, and it's going to install that Cordova plugin for me. All right, so there's the Cordova plugin installed, including the Google Play services. Um, now if I run that one more time on Cordova Sim, just to kind of show you what this does, it'll actually say, sorry, that plugin is not supported for simulation. So we do have that warning in there now uh, to let you know that that's why it's not simulating correctly. So just bear that in mind. Okay, so if I go to my index HTML, there's not much this thing does. It just basically accepts a push notification and throws it up on screen. You can see it's pretty straightforward. It has the registering message, and this is waiting. Uh, it has this message list, right? And then if I look at my JavaScript here, there's not a whole lot to it. It has the register function, and then it has the um, it has the add message function. So when a message re is received, right, on notification, add message, it goes through the process of updating that little um, uh, little list item that we saw earlier on the screen. So back over here, this guy. All right, so messages gets updated. So that's message gets updated there, right there. Okay, but the real magic that you care about is these the combination of these things. So the push server URL, uh, as well as the um, uh, the Android sender and variant and variant secret. So let's see again. I'm doing this from memory. We'll have to see if I get all these things correctly here. Um, push server URL is an easy one. It's just this guy right here. All right, but keep in mind since this has to run on the device you want to put in the IP address. So let me look at my IP address, 192.168.1.19, and then I need the ag-push there. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say HTTP 192, um, and that was 192.168.1.19. Did I get that right? Fantastic. 8080-ag-push. Okay, the next thing I need is the sender API. So where does that come from? Uh, so you have to have a Google account set up, uh, just like, and you have to do an Apple account. And in the case of Apple, you gotta pay your $99. But Google, if I remember correctly, it's still free um, to be an Android developer. And you get access to this thing called console.developers.google.com. And you create projects out here. And when you create the project, um, you basically have to set up an API. Uh, you can see enable an API. And I actually have Google Cloud Messaging turned on already. If it's not turned on already for Google Cloud Messaging, you got to go through this long list down here and turn it on. Right? You can see these are all off. So flip that bit on uh, for Google Cloud Messaging for Android. You have a similar process you go through for Apple, but we're doing Android right now. Uh, and I want to look at my credentials there. And I'm going to see the public API access. And more importantly, though, let me go back to my uh, AeroGear push project here. And where'd it go? Arrow gear push project. I gotta get to the right place. There it is. So that project number is very critical. All right, so project number. I'm gonna highlight that. And I'm gonna come in here and say that is my sender ID. All right, I'm gonna need this later as well. So I'm gonna need this sender ID later. Okay, so these next two fields are filled in from our push server, right? So you got your sender ID, uh, but you gotta go in here and create the application on the push server itself on uh, this address ag-push so let's go back over here to my push server I'm gonna say create application uh, this is just hello world and I don't need the description here I'm being lazy okay so there's the application I'm gonna create a variant uh, and so I'm gonna add a variant let's just call this Android I'm gonna pick Android here and it's gonna say give us your project number All right, that's the sender ID the project number and then I need this Google Cloud Messaging key. And if I remember correctly, let's go back over here. APIs, um, or credentials, and it's this guy. All right, so copy that one. Key for server applications, public API access. Okay, um, and we'll go back to our guy here, paste that in. All right, and we're gonna hit add. Uh, so there's our variant. And so now that we've added the variant, we have the variant ID and the secret. So now this is where I copy and paste these guys. Notice you also have example implementation, by the way. So for your Android developer or Cordova developer, this is what it would look like. So I could come to the Cordova developer here. and Let's just do this. Uh, uh, it's easier just to copy and paste this whole section in, right? Just to make sure I don't get anything wrong. And boom, boom. You know, there we go. 
All right, so, okay, so if I did that all correctly, we're, we're gonna find out. Uh, it should be as simple as that. So if I remember all my steps, and it's certainly possible that I got a couple of them wrong. Um, so let's do a run as uh, on Android device. Okay, now this actually does, again, goes through the process of generating the Android project. First it asked me what, you know, it imported it, um, hit run. Uh, and when it generates the Android project, it has a lot more going on here. You notice the Google Play services for Android and the JBoss Mobile Push plugin and Android support here. So there's more in that plugins directory. There's more that has to be processed. And therefore, you notice it has a much longer dexing period. Okay, so as part of the build, it goes through a much more, uh, a, gr a much grander effort, if you will, to actually produce that app, that APK that gets deployed to the actual device. Uh, one other tip I'd give you for deployment to devices is uh, when you plug in your thing, uh, plug in your Android phone and you have the SDK installed correctly, you can use this feature called ADB devices and you should see your device there. Uh, by default, we target one of them um, when you say run on Android device. So only have one of them plugged in. If you have two plugged in, um, we pick the one on the top of the list is my understanding. So it, you always get the one on top in this case. So just bear that in mind that if you have two or three or four plugged in, then you're just gonna get the one. It's gonna target one of those with this run on Android device. But you can see it's a much more involved process and we have to we have to wait until this process is done and we have to find interesting things to talk about while we're waiting. And hopefully we did all the steps correctly that, and everything will you know deploy uh, just right. And we'll get that application out there on the Android device itself. Uh, this is my Android device again, just to show you that in case you missed it. Oh, looks like the application is being installed now. Notice it said successfully registered there, or successful registered. Uh, and that's not even correct English, is it? Successful registered, and I can't talk correctly. But let's go back to our application. You can see there's the, the one variant, and notice there's one installation, all right? So that, that's how you know that the magic really happened, is when you see this device token here in our push console, uh, and it's ready to rock. So that looks great. You can see that I have one active application, one active installation on this brand new environment I have here. So if we really want to have some fun with it, let's send it push notifications directly from this console. Hello world, uh, JBoss mobile, okay. Uh, aliases are useful if you, you tie those typically to the user, specific username, like their email address or something. So you can push just to one user if you want. Uh, you can also have device types, push to iOS, push to Android. And you can also say things like categories, like push to the Southeast sales team, push to the Northeast doctors, you know, push to people in um, Singapore or something like that. So you can kind of really make it pretty interesting by setting up your, your categories accordingly. And then um, I hit send push notification there. Whoop, and it happened very fast. I should have flipped over quick, quickly. So you can see it right there. Hello world, JBoss Mobile. Um, yeah, it's going so fast. We should, let's make this a little bit smaller so we can kind of see what's happening here real time. Okay, so there's the device running over there. Uh, another message and hit go. Now, it should be noted that it might you might think I'm communicating directly from the server out to this device. And it's not happening at all. We are communicating to our local host server here, sending that push notification. It goes out to Google out on the internet, Google servers. Google servers then find my device out on the internet, right? It might be a 3G network, 4G network, whatever and it finds my device and sends the message out. So there's a whole lot of stuff happening here, even though it's happening so quickly. And, but more importantly, a push notification is incredibly valuable for when the device is offline, or sorry, when the, the application is offline. So let me, let me go there, and I'm multitasking. I'm just gonna kill the application, all right? So I'm, I'll kill all these applications. I don't need them. How about that? Um, all right, so I've killed the application, and I'm back to the main screen here. Uh, all apps are dead. Uh, up there, send push notification. And I don't know if you noticed right there at the very top. So did you see it? The little icon rolled up there. Uh, and there's my push notification. So I can tap on it where it said all apps are dead. And it loads up and it says all apps are dead. Okay. So, you know, let's do that one more time. You can actually just, if you're multitasking and the app is in the background, it kind of works the same way. Just watch that top bar right there where it says Google and you see those two little icons right there. Okay, uh, one more message, and and we hit send push notification, 
and then you see it show up right there. Okay, so that's how it works in Android land. It has that little top notification bar, and you, the user can look at it, look at it, and then touch, and that's how they would uh, see the actual message, right? Um, one more message. Okay, well that's push notifications, and push notifications, as I said, is kind of a more of an advanced topic. Uh, the nice thing about push notifications is we also have a RESTful API, so you can actually, from your any environment that can support REST, let's say your uh, Camel ESB routes is an example, Camel routes, you might want to send push notifications out of that environment, or you want to send push notifications out of, the, um, uh, out of any one of our tools. We also have a Java API as well. All right, well that's all for now.